What you're looking at right now is footage dating back all the way to the early 2000s, showcasing the earliest stages of esports history. Over 100,000 people showed up to watch these gamers duke it out in the most popular competitive video game during this time. And that game is StarCraft. StarCraft in many ways revolutionized gaming. It paved the way for all of the competitive games you tune in to watch nowadays, and From Korea showed the Western world just how truly passionate and amazing video games can really be. It was the first game to ever garner sponsorships, have a prize pool, and even have its own dedicated television channel. In Korea, professional StarCraft players are looked at as idols on a similar level to pop stars and celebrities and would make around a quarter of a million dollars a year. StarCraft gained so much popularity at such a rapid pace, it became an eSport before the term eSport was even invented. It was the pinnacle of video games for several years and continued to stay on top with the help of its first expansion, Brood War, which was also a massive success. But then after a full decade of dominating the scene, StarCraft eventually started to lose popularity. The game was more or less figured out, viewers were getting bored of watching the same strategies unfold, and the game was in desperate need of a new update. But unfortunately, Blizzard didn't have any updates planned for StarCraft, because instead, they were working on something much much bigger. StarCraft 2 was just like the original StarCraft in every positive way. It was fast-paced, competitive, and most importantly, incredibly hyped to watch. StarCraft yet again continued to reign supreme, with over 3 million copies sold worldwide in the first month, becoming the fastest selling real-time strategy game of all time. Blizzard capitalized on the game's popularity and skyrocketed it even further by creating and funding their own tournaments called the StarCraft Championship Series. Players from all around the globe were invited, and tournaments that were live-streamed would peak hundreds and thousands of viewers, all tuning in to see if their favorite player would have what it takes to take down one of the Korean gods. Things were looking good for both StarCraft and Blizzard, but whilst they were riding on their huge wave of success, there was a new type of game on the horizon. But before we get into that, a word from our sponsor. Oh my gosh, I just outplayed that guy so incredibly hard. I'm gonna upload that clip to YouTube. Oh wait, gosh darn it, I forgot to press the record button. No! But wait a minute, I forgot. I've got outplayed the automatic screen recording app. It's incredibly simple to set up and always captures your best moments. With just a simple click of a hotkey, I can go back in time and grab whichever replay I want. And I can even edit my clips and publish them straight to my socials directly through the app. Download and try out Outplay for absolutely free in the description below, and thanks again Outplay for sponsoring this video. So, the year is 2009, and a Warcraft 3 custom map originally created by pseudo-anonymous designer Yule is taking the world by storm. It's called Dota, and over a million users are logging into Warcraft 3 just to play it. Funnily enough, Yule was inspired by Aeon of Strife, another custom map very similar to Dota created in a game none other than yours truly. However, despite its massive popularity, Blizzard chose to ignore Dota and its massive success, since they had way more important matters to attend to. Another company, on the other hand, kept a close eye on it, studied it, sneakily snagged the current developer, and then shortly after released their own version of the game. And it was called League of Legends. And the game blew up. Over 1 million players signed up for its initial launch, and it was only growing bigger and bigger every day from then on. The game genre MOBA was finally becoming more well-known, and every single gamer from around the world was talking about it. It offered a much more basic and noob-friendly way to enjoy Dota, and most importantly, didn't require you to buy a copy of Warcraft 3 to play it. Finally, Blizzard takes notice, and immediately tries to take action starting development on their own MOBA game. Blizzard Dota, but not before another game developer sees their opportunity and shoots their shot first. Valve snags the current lead developer of Dota and quickly hatches a masterfully excellent idea. The release of the same game, just with the number two at the end of it. Fucking genius. They've used this strategy once or twice before and it's worked every single time. 
time. Blizzard is now in full panic mode, seeing as that Dota 2 turned out to be another massive success, gaining just as much popularity as League of Legends did and is now the second most popular PC game you can get your hands on for absolutely free. Other game developers are also trying to capitalize on this new wave and all of a sudden the MOBA train seems to be slowing down a bit since it's getting a little bit too crowded. Blizzard starts to hesitate, postponing the release of Blizzard Dota but then all of a sudden gets this amazing idea or so they thought. In 2012, a lawsuit was filed for the ownership of the name Dota, as Blizzard claims that they technically own it since the game was originally created in their map editor. This failed miserably. Unfortunately for Blizzard, this argument did not fly, seeing as that there were no terms or agreements stating ownership of said maps, essentially leaving all of those community-created custom maps free of use and that Valve was eligible to claim one of them. What also didn't help their case was the fact that Icefrog, the lead developer of Dota at the time before getting hired by Valve, proposed the idea of creating a brand new standalone Dota game to Blizzard a long time ago. Blizzard denied his proposal as they saw it to be a waste of time and money and would rather focus on their current game, World of Warcraft. The court then settled on allowing Valve to keep the name of their game, ultimately leaving Blizzard with no other options than to make a brand new MOBA game not affiliated with Dota in any way. And in 2014, here's at the storm, is born. It was overall a pretty average game to say the very least, receiving numerous positive reviews from critics and a decently sizable player base following. However, still nowhere near the success of either League of Legends or Dota 2. Despite lots of players looking forward to the game and Blizzard still holding a good reputation during this time, Heroes of the Storm did not do as well as it should have. The game earned its reputation for being a unique and different style of MOBA that separated it from the rest of the group. But because of that same reason, a lot of players who already adjusted to the traditional style of MOBA didn't find the spin-off to be very fitting for their taste. Things like shared experience levels for every player on the team, no gold farming or item shop, and multiple different maps each with their own quests and objectives made most players choose to leave the game and go back to their respective MOBAs of choice. Blizzard, unhappy with their creation and unable to compete with their rivals, chose to slow down work and plans on updating the game for the next eight years, eventually announcing that they will discontinue development of the game in 2022, leaving whatever's left of the remaining player base and esports teams out in the dark with absolutely nothing to look forward to. As of 2024, Blizzard still struggles to set a foot inside the esports scene. With the Overwatch League being the closest thing they can get, it still doesn't come close to League's LCS or Dota 2's The International. Which is kind of crazy to think since both of these games derive from something that was once in their possession and in one of their own games. But when the opportunity to make something amazing arose, they quickly shut it down, only for them to realize their grave mistake and to try and recover it by making a complete 180. And let's Let's be honest, this isn't the first time this has happened. It's become pretty typical to see Blizzard shoot themselves in the foot over and over and over. Uh, have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. And and by the way, you don't want to that to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. Your favorite flavor is vanilla.